What if Spider-Man's coolest suits weren't just comic book fantasy, but something we could actually build? And which ones would totally fail outside the pages of a comic? Stick around, because some of these results might surprise you. Here's how we're judging them. Each suit gets graded on four things. First, the special abilities. What powers does the suit actually bring to the table? Second, energy use. How much power would it realistically need? Third, reliability. Does it work consistently or does it come with big risks? And finally, feasibility. Could we build it today or is it still pure science fiction? Each category gets a score from one to 10 and at the end, we'll slot the suits into tiers. S tier for the best, then A, B, and C. With that, let's start with one of Spidey's most famous looks. When Spider-Man first wore the black symbiote suit in Amazing Spider-Man number 252 back in 1984, it wasn't just a fashion statement, it was a turning point. The design looked sleek and intimidating, but what shocked readers was the reveal that this costume wasn't made of fabric at all, it was alive. A symbiotic alien organism had bonded itself to Peter Parker, and with that twist, Marvel introduced one of the most fascinating and frightening suits in comic book history. The abilities this suit provides are extraordinary. Instead of carrying cartridges of web fluid, Peter suddenly had unlimited organic webbing that came directly from the alien's body. He didn't need to change clothes anymore because the symbiote could morph into anything. Streetwear, formal wear. It enhanced his strength and reflexes, responding instantly to his thoughts, almost as if it were an extension of his nervous system. In one of the strangest twists, it could bypass his spider sense entirely. That meant the one defense Peter always relied on didn't work because the suit knew his body so intimately it could mask itself. In terms of pure abilities, the black suit is almost unbeatable, easily earning a 9 out of 10. Even more interesting is how it powers itself. A human produces about 100 watts of energy, like a steady light bulb running all the time. The symbiote thrives by feeding off Peter's adrenaline and biochemicals, meaning that the more active and stressed he is, the more fuel it gets. If the suit only needs 10 to 20 watts to operate, it's incredibly efficient compared to mechanical suits that demand massive batteries or reactors. On energy consumption, it deserves another 9 out of 10. But here's where things go south. Reliability. Machines can fail, but at least they don't get jealous. The symbiote does. In the comics, it became obsessive and possessive, trying to permanently bond with Peter whether he wanted it or not. This mirrors real-world parasites like Toxoplasma gondii, which hijacks the brains of mice and makes them reckless around cats. The idea that your suit could literally change your personality makes it one of the most unreliable pieces of tech imaginable. Add in its glaring weaknesses, sound waves and fire can devastate it, and reliability sinks to a 4 out of 10. Feasibility is a fascinating question. Researchers today are creating living materials that heal themselves and fabrics that shift shape with heat or electrical signals. Military scientists are experimenting with armor that seals bullet holes. A true symbiote, something genetically engineered to bond with a host, isn't outside the realm of possibility in the next 50 to 100 years. But the real issue isn't whether we could make it, it's whether we could control it. For feasibility, the suit earns a cautious 6 out of 10. The symbiote is a paradox. It's powerful, efficient, and maybe even possible in the far future. But its reliability issues make it as dangerous as it is brilliant. It's the ultimate double-edged sword. A dream for a superhero, but a nightmare if the suit decides it knows better than you. Two decades later, in Amazing Spider-Man number 529 from 2006, Peter Parker got an upgrade courtesy of Tony Stark himself. If the black suit was biology run wild, the Iron Spider is cutting edge engineering. Stark tech sharpened into a weaponized version of Spider-Man's costume. It's sleek, stylish, and loaded with tech that feels like it belongs in both an Iron Man comic and a Spider-Man story. The most iconic feature is, of course, the mechanical arms, or Waldos, that sprout from the back. These golden limbs can lift several tons each, move with inhuman precision, and extend Peter's reach in ways his normal body never could. Some versions of the armor even included cameras in the tips, giving Spider-Man extra viewpoints during combat. On top of that, 
The suit added gliding mesh for short distance flight, advanced sensors capable of tracking enemies through walls, and nanotech web shooters able to shift between different types of webbing. It's basically Iron Man armor built for acrobatics, earning a solid 8 out of 10 for abilities. But with great power comes great energy bills. In real factories, similar robotic arms can draw between 3 and 5 kilowatts each. Multiply that by 3 and you're chewing through about 15,000 watts just for the arms. And you drain modern batteries in minutes. Without Stark's arc reactor technology, this thing would be as useful as a sports car with no gas tank. For power consumption, it scores a disappointing 3 out of 10. Where it shines is reliability. Stark builds his tech tough, and the Iron Spider benefits from his obsession with redundancy and repair. Nanotechnology lets the suit heal minor damage automatically, and the core systems are designed for combat resilience. That said, complexity is always a liability. Still, compared to the temperamental symbiote, this armor is a dependable workhorse deserving of an 8 out of 10 for reliability. Feasibility is surprisingly close. Exoskeletons that help disabled people walk already exist. The military has prototypes that let soldiers carry massive loads. Companies like Boston Dynamics have robots that can jump, flip, and balance with ease. The real roadblock is power supply and miniaturization. We can't yet shrink heavy-duty robotics down to something light enough for Spider-Man's wild acrobatics. Nanotech that reshapes itself is still out of reach, but with carbon fiber, advanced motors, and compact batteries, a prototype suit could exist within 20 or 30 years. For feasibility, the Iron Spider scores a 7 out of 10. All in all, the Iron Spider is a technological marvel, but it's held back by its hunger for energy. Without Tony Stark's endless resources, the suit would likely run out of power halfway through its first fight. It's brilliant, but also impractical for long-term use. In 1992, Marvel gave us a glimpse of Spider-Man's future with Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man of 2099. Unlike Peter's suits, which were either stitched together at home or designed by Stark, Miguel's comes from a world where futuristic science and genetic engineering are part of everyday life. The result is a costume that feels like it belongs as much in a lab as it does in a comic. The suit is crafted from unstable molecules, Marvel's go-to explanation for indestructible fabric. That means it resists damage, adapts to conditions, and never wears out. Built into the design are razor-sharp talons capable of slicing steel, glider wings that let Miguel soar across the skyline, and a bulletproof body that makes him far more durable than Peter in a simple spandex outfit. On top of that, the suit enhances his senses, letting him perceive the world in slow motion during combat. And then there's the camouflage system, which bends light itself to render him almost invisible. This is an arsenal of enhancements packed into one costume, easily worth 9 out of 10 in abilities. What makes the 2099 suit especially interesting is its efficiency. Unlike the Iron Spider, it doesn't rely on massive motors. The camouflage, powered by metamaterials, would require only a tiny bit of electricity. Since the claws and wings use Miguel's biology rather than external systems, the whole suit might only consume around 50 watts. That makes it far more efficient than anything Stark ever built, deserving an 8 out of 10 for power use. Reliability is another strength. With no moving parts and a fabric that self-repairs, it avoids many of the mechanical failures that plague armored suits. But the technology is so advanced that if something did malfunction, modern science wouldn't have a clue how to fix it. And the suit is genetically keyed to Miguel's altered DNA, making it reliable for him, but probably useless for anyone else. For reliability, that's a 7 out of 10. Feasibility, though, is its downfall. Unstable molecules don't exist in real science, and creating materials that are indestructible yet flexible is still a dream. Invisibility cloaks and metamaterials are real, but fragile and limited to lab settings. Slow motion vision could be simulated with augmented reality, and wings are simple enough, but overall this tech is 50 to 100 years away at best. For feasibility, the 2099 suit only earns a 4 out of 10. The Spider-Man 2099 suit is sleek, efficient, and loaded with futuristic upgrades. But right now, it's less like advanced technology and more like magic. It's a costume from tomorrow, not one we could ever wear today. In 
In 1962's Amazing Fantasy No. 15, Peter Parker first swung into action in his red and blue suit. Compared to the symbiote, the Iron Spider, or the futuristic 2099 outfit, this design is shockingly simple. But sometimes, simplicity is exactly what makes something brilliant. The suit doesn't enhance Peter's powers, it doesn't camouflage, it doesn't sprout mechanical arms, and it definitely doesn't feed off his biochemistry. What it does do is allow him to move with absolute freedom. It stretches with his acrobatics, protects his identity with a mask, and provides comfort during long nights of web slinging. Even the web pattern isn't just decoration. It helps Peter judge distance and motion while swinging, almost like a built-in HUD. For abilities, it scores a modest 6 out of 10. But in terms of power consumption, the classic suit is unbeatable. It uses none. There are no batteries to charge, no reactors to maintain, no hidden systems that can fail. All the energy comes from Peter himself, and for that reason, it earns a perfect 10 out of 10 in energy use. Reliability is equally impressive. If the suit rips, Peter patches it. If it burns, he sews another. There's no AI to malfunction, no systems to glitch, no parasites to betray him. For over 60 years of comic history, this suit has been the one constant. Reliability is another 10 out of 10. Feasibility is the final piece, and here the suit wins by a landslide. We can make it right now. In fact, we already do. Compression fabrics from brands like Nike and Under Armour outperformed the spandex available in the 1960s. They breathe better, stretch more, and dry faster. With some basic tailoring and a mask, anyone could replicate Spider-Man's iconic look for under $200. That means feasibility gets another perfect 10. The red and blue suit proves that not all innovations need to be flashy. While the other costumes promise power and complexity, this one succeeds because it works seamlessly with Peter's natural abilities. It's timeless, practical, and real. Qualities no futuristic armor or alien organism can match. After running the numbers, the final ranking is clear. At the top, in S tier, sits the classic red and blue suit. It may lack bells and whistles, but its reliability, efficiency, and real-world feasibility make it unbeatable. The Iron Spider lands in A tier, bursting with cutting-edge abilities but sabotaged by its enormous energy demands. Spider-Man 2099 takes B tier, dazzling with futuristic efficiency but still far beyond what science can deliver today. And in C tier rests the Black Symbiote, powerful and efficient but dangerously unpredictable blurring the line between partner and parasite. The biggest surprise? The simplest suit wins. In the end, the best technology isn't always the flashiest. Sometimes it's the one that lets Spider-Man be Spider-Man. So, which suit would you choose to swing through the city in? Drop your picks in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Science Meets Comics breakdowns.